Coming up on today's edition of Locked On Eagles, it is the fourth annual Mock versus Mock right here on Mock Draft Monday. Myself, Louis DiBiase, and my co-host Gino Camilleri, we both did dueling mock drafts, and we're going to see what the listeners like the most between our seven-round mock drafts. Who had the better mock in 2022? That's coming up next right here on Locked On Eagles. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. Today's edition of Locked On Eagles is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline as you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before because BetOnline is where the game starts. You have the Women's National Basketball Championship last night. You had the Final Four this past weekend, the National Championship coming up soon. The NFL Draft is right around the corner. We are in April, guys, so just a few weeks away. Make sure you're checking out Bet Online, the official sports book of the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm Louis DiBiase. Welcome into a Monday edition of your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, Lockdown Eagles. It's Mock Draft Monday. And today, as I said in the cold open, it's a little bit different. Normally, Gino and I, we go through a seven round mock draft together. You know, we take turns. He gets picked 15. I get 16, 19, 51. The Eagles have four picks in the first two rounds this year. So we've been taking turns, taking some top prospects for the birds in 2022. But something we like to do every year, you know, we do our offseason simulations. We do different mock draft Mondays. One thing we've always done since we started Locked on Eagles together in 2018 is one Monday a year, we split up for a second. He becomes, if you will, the Joe Douglas, and I'm the Howie Roseman, or maybe he's Howie and I'm Joe Douglas. I don't know. Maybe that might be an insult. It might be a compliment. Depends on who you ask. But what we like to do is we do dueling mock drafts, where I go through a seven-round mock draft. He does the same thing. We play the roles of Howie Roseman, what we would do in a mock. You can do trade-ups. You can trade down. You can stay put. Especially with this year, that's an interesting strategy. You know, what route you should take with four picks in the first two rounds. And then after the show, we always go to the listeners. Make sure you follow us on Twitter to vote on what mock draft was better at Lockdown Birds, is where the poll will be. We'll retweet it out. And always talking birds on Twitter at DBLC LOE and at GC24 underscore football. So Gino, he has his mock draft in segment three. I have mine coming up next as well in segment two. And it's just funny, like looking at, I love looking at past mock drafts as well, just to see how we did, you know, in comparison to each other, what listeners like better, and then what actually turned out better, at least in rookie seasons in 2021. So here is what happened back in 2021 last year when we did mock versus mock. This was my mock draft. I actually double dipped in the first two rounds at wide receiver. So I took Devontae Smith, and I think most people would enjoy that, and I don't think they would regret that pick of mine considering the way Devontae turned out, breaking the Eagles' rookie receiving record in 2021. But then, And then in the second round, I didn't go with Landon Dickerson, and I didn't even take my boy Asante Samuel Jr., which most mock drafts I had him coming to the birds in the second round. I took Ole Miss wide receiver and now a New York Jet, Elijah Moore, And uh, that actually would have turned out really great. If Elijah Moore was in the slot right now with Quez Watkins and Devontae Smith, it's kind of the piece the Eagles are looking for, whether you think it's a big receiver, you know, a gadget, you know, speed guy, a slot dependent player, regardless, the Eagles need a wide receiver to complement Watkins and Smith. We're looking for that in 2022 for this team. Elijah Moore, a double divot receiver last year, it kind of would have made a lot of sense considering their stance right now at this position. And I was motivated last year by what the Broncos did two years ago when they took this similar route. They had Jerry Judy in the first round. They took Penn State wide receiver KJ Hamler in the second. And then I had Georgia cornerback Tyson Campbell in the third. I did two double dips. Man, I took four receivers and corners in the first three rounds. Uh, The two third-round picks the Eagles had, Georgia corner Tyson Campbell, and then Stanford corner Paulson Adebo. So uh, my mock draft did win last year's mock versus mock. And here's a look at Gino's mock draft from last year. So he had JC Horn in the first round, which right now I love, even though Horn got hurt last year, 
He looked great for Carolina before he got injured. Did not fall to the birds in the first round last year, but Gino was going corner. And then in the second round, he went receiver with Kadarius Tony, the now New York Giants receiver, formerly of the Florida Gators. Uh, Richie Grant, the UCF safety in the third round. The other third round pick, he took Miami edge rusher Quincy Roche. So uh, he went corner receiver and safety in the first three rounds and edge. I went Receiver, receiver, corner, corner. Listeners seem to like that. I won the poll last year 58.7% to 41.3%. let us see what happens this year in the 2022 version of Mock versus Mock. I'll have my seven-round mock draft coming up next. Already did my mock. We're going to recap my moves, and then we'll have Gino in segment three. And again, we want to hear from you guys. What mock draft did you like better? Our poll is coming up at Locked on Birds later on this week. Guys, before we do head into my mock draft on Mock versus Mock, just want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Athletic Greens. Our next partner at Athletic Greens has a product I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because simply I don't have enough time in the day to prepare the amount of healthy meals I need to get me through the day. I've got a lot of jobs right now. I'm working three different roles throughout the week both day and evening, the grind, and you guys know it, is absolutely real, and I needed more energy, good feeling energy, so I started relying on caffeine, and that just was not the move, right? I was, you know, the amount of caffeine I was drinking, every time I'd sneeze, my eye was twitching, my energy wasn't right, anxiety, it just was not the right way to approach it, so I've been on Athletic Greens now for a few weeks, about a month, and I really do love it. It doesn't taste healthy either, like some not good tasting products. It has a mild tropical flavor I'm really into. And I look forward to it each morning. I'm recording our podcast and writing our articles for Fox 43. So what is the stuff with Athletic Greens? Well, with one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. I've sent it over to my brothers too. They're absolutely loving it. It supports better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing simply with all of the best things. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the cold and flu season. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance at Athletic Greens. All right, Eagles fans, welcome back in to Mock versus Mock 2022 style. I'm Louis DiBiase. Thank you so much for making Locked on Eagles your first listen each and every day. Really excited to get into this edition of Mock Draft Monday as me and Gino go head to head with our mock drafts. You'll hear from Gino in segment three. But first, let's take a look at what I did as a follow up as I try to defend my title as I won mock draft versus mock draft in 2021. Let's take a look at what I did as Howie Roseman. And so for me, I took a different approach than I did last year, which was all about double dipping at wide receiver and corner. This year with four picks in the first two rounds, I didn't need to necessarily double dip. And I wanted to address a lot of different spots, especially considering the quiet free agency so far the Eagles have had. So here is what I did with Mock versus Mock 2022. With the 15th overall selection, I had Andrew Booth, the cornerback of Clemson, fall, and I was kind of sweating it out. I wanted a corner with one of those first two picks at 15 or 16. I did not get Ahmad Gardner to fall. I did not get Derek Stingley to fall. And after those two, it's like, okay, there's there's a drop-off after that to Andrew Booth and you know Trent McDuffie. And you could consider Kyer Elam in that conversation as well. In a lot of these mock drafts, Booth has not been falling. But I think he's the one other corner, and I really do like McDuffie. But I think when it comes to, you know, McDuffie and Elam, you could talk me into them at 19 or maybe even a trade down in the first round and then select one of those corners. But when it comes to 15th overall pick or 16, if I'm going to take a corner, I really want that to be, you know, Gardner, Stingley, or Booth. 
and Booth was the one available. So I jumped all over it. I love Booth's versatility to play both man and zone coverage off press. His really good ball skills are something I want in this secondary. And I just think, you know, you don't necessarily need a corner in 2022 with Darius Slay and Avante Maddox. You know, your CB2 on the outside, you can get by again with another Steven Nelson type of player. But long term, the Eagles have ignored corner in the first round for a long time. I shouldn't say ignored because maybe last year they wanted Horn or Sertain and they didn't fall. And they have invested in it early in drafts. You know, the second round was Sidney Jones, the third with Razul Douglas. They gave up a third to trade for Ronald Darby. They traded top picks to get Darius Slay, you know, day two selections. But they haven't invested a first round pick at corner since what? Lido Shepard. It's time to do that. It's time to have a long term outside corner. And again, just because you have Slay and Maddox doesn't mean you don't want to have the luxury, especially in a pass heavy NFL like it is today, to have three really good corners, especially two on the boundary. So I thought Andrew Booth was the right pick there at 15 because I, it was between corner and wide receiver. There weren't a lot of top edge rushers that fell. And I felt like with receivers who was available, there were still four guys that I was really comfortable with, with that 16th pick or 19. So I took Andrew Booth, but then I did not make a selection at 16. I made a trade with the Kansas City Chiefs. They moved up with that 16th pick for the Eagles. And the Eagles, we took their 50th overall selection in the second round and collected a first round pick in 2023 to have quarterback flexibility. We'll see what happens with Jalen Hurts. You want more ammunition next year in case you do need and you're going to try to trade up for a quarterback. The Chiefs wanted to move up for a top receiver after they lost Tyree Kill, looking to replace Hill after moving him to Miami. So we move down, collect a first next year. We get another second this year. Still four picks in the first two rounds. At 19, I went with a receiver. I went with, I was again comfortable with all four players that were there. It was Drake London, Jameson Williams, Traylon Burks, and Chris Olave. And I said, I'll take any of them. So I moved down with the Chiefs and I sat at 19. I said, let's see which receiver comes. It was Traylon Burks and Chris Olave. I went with Traylon Burks. I think, you know, Olave is a better route runner. He's a faster player. I think he's more interchangeable with Watkins and Smith. But Burks' run after the catchability with that power and length and that size, I think would complement this team really well. And I just, Burks is such a fun study. I would love to add him with Smith and Watkins and see what Jalen Hurts could do with that young trio this year. He could be your, if you will, your, you know, T Higgins to what you already have with Jamar Chase. And then your really solid third receiver, a Tyler Boyd. You know, Quez Watkins isn't Boyd style wise, but you know, when it comes to potential tiers he's at with pass catchers, I think it does kind of add up to where this could be a Bengals like wide receiver trio with Traylon Burks, Devontae Smith, and Quez Watkins. Jalen Hurts at that point, not a lot of excuses. That's a lot of young firepower adding Dallas Goddard as well at the tight end position. So after that, again, I took Booth and Burks and then I moved down with the Chiefs. But the Lions made me an offer. And then this is all through the Draft Network's Mock Draft Simulator. You can do trade-ups and trade-downs. So the Lions offered me the 32nd overall pick for the Chiefs' 50th pick we had in the second round, and then a fourth round and a fifth round selection. So I'm like, I can move up, what, at this point, uh, 18 spots? I can get a player in the first round, jump back in before day one ends, get that fifth-year option on their contract, and boom, I've got a third pick again in the first round, and I collected a first in 2023. I did it, and my motivation was as well, I want one of those safety prospects. After missing out on Marcus Williams, you bring back Anthony Harris You know, as another uh, stopgap one-year signing yet again at the safety position. It's time. Malcolm Jenkins retired. You haven't replaced him since he left in 2019. It's time to get that Swiss Army knife versatile safety. And I just didn't trust that between, you know, Jalen Petrie of Baylor, Jaquan Brisker of Penn State, and Lewis Seen of Georgia. I did not trust that one of those three were going to be available in 18 picks. I did not want to risk it. You need safety too much, short-term and long-term. So I moved up with the Lions, traded 50, a fourth-round pick and a fifth, for that 32nd pick, and I took Penn State safety, Jaquan Brisker, a versatile, do-it-all kind of player, a local player. You know, a lot of Eagles fans or Penn State fans, they'll be familiar with Brisker. He can play deep, 
cover two, single high safety. Come in the box. He's powerful. He is a good tackler. I think he has really good coverage ability as well. The Eagles need this kind of player. And between Brisker, Scene, and Petrie, I go back and forth with Brisker and Petrie, but I think Brisker might be my favorite safety after Kyle Hamilton. You got to get your hands on one of these players. I went with Brisker. And then look, you know, normally the Eagles wouldn't do this with that many picks in the first round. They wouldn't not take a lineman on either side of the ball. But you don't have to take a lineman every single year in the first round, even though you do prioritize it. And even though it is, you know, outside of quarterback, the most important units in football. Because you still have a second round pick. You still have a ton of young pieces on the offensive line this year. You don't have to take an offensive lineman in the first two rounds this year. And with defensive line, there just wasn't anybody worth these selections. And I like the depth of the class. So I came back and I still got a second round defensive lineman. You know, they they need to address these other positions early in the draft and, and get some long-term pieces. You know, cornerback, safety. I wanted a receiver with Traylon Burks. I love the depth of this class. So I said, I'll come back around for a defensive lineman. And I took a versatile player, somebody that can play, you know, both spots. You didn't come away with an edge or a defensive tackle in the first round. So I said, let me get somebody that can do both, you know, kind of like a Charles Amenehu, who we fell in love with on this podcast a couple of years ago out of Texas, now on the 49ers, or, you know, something Milton Williams can do too on the Eagles. He's a defensive tackle that can also play on the edge. I drafted Josh Paschal in the second round at 51st overall, the edge from Kentucky. He's more of an edge, but he can also play defensive tackle. I love that versatility, especially a guy that, you know, when you have Hassan Riddick on the field, if you want to go with more of a NASCAR package, a pass rush unit, and Riddick's on the edge, I think Paschal could play inside. If you run, you know, five guys going at the quarterback, Paschal could be your edge with Riddick next to him. I think there's a lot of versatility there with Paschal, Milton Williams, that's a lot of versatility. Brandon Graham as well can play inside and out. I thought Pascal was really good value. He can wear a lot of hats up front at 51 from Kentucky. And then day, th- uh, day two to wrap it up, my third round pick, I went with Greg Dulcich, the UCLA tight end. Daniel Jeremiah thinks he's the best tight end in the class. I was really impressed with his receiving ability down in Mobile at the Senior Bowl. The Eagles want to be more explosive in 12 personnel after losing Zach Ertz. I don't think they want to be a 12 personnel heavy team, but at the same time, I think they do want a good pass catching tight end behind Dallas Goddard and Greg Dulcich is one of the best. I think, you know, Trey McBride will probably go ahead of him as well as um, uh, likely, but I think Dulcich is probably top three, top four, and it's a deep tight end class. So Isaiah likely is the other tight end I was saying um, after McBride. Greg Dulcich, I think, is one of the best in a very deep class, and I really want my hands on one of these tight ends in 2022. And then to wrap up the draft, day three, in the fifth round at pick 154, I took Cam Jurgens, an interior offensive lineman from Nebraska, continue to build that offensive line depth. And with the final pick in the sixth round at 194, I went with South Dakota State running back, Pierre Strong Jr., one of my favorite running backs in this class. He's versatile, a really good receiver. I think he could be your like Kenyon Barner, a really good punt returner back in 2017. And he could also be insurance. Who knows Miles Sanders' future with this team? Boston Scott just signed another short-term deal. You've got Kenny Gainwell, but you could use some more depth at running back if Jordan Howard doesn't come back. And I think strong, the return ability is something I looked into as well and thought it would be a good fit. So there is my 2022 mock versus mock mock draft. Andrew Booth, the corner at 15, Traylon Burks, the receiver at 19, Jaquan Brisker, the safety at Penn State at pick 32 traded down, collected a 2023 first, got back up in the first round with the Lions. I did a lot of moves in this mock draft. And then I took Josh Paschal and Greg Dulcich on day two, an edge, versatile, and a tight end to go behind Dallas Goddard. Then an interior offensive lineman and a running back in Cam Jurgens and Pierre Strong Jr. to wrap up the draft. We'll hear from Gino coming up next. Could he do better? than what I just pulled off in Mock versus Mock. That's coming up next right here on Locked on Eagles. But guys, first, today's show is sponsored by Built Bar. It's the best tasting protein bar you can find, and it's not even close. So many protein bars, I hated them growing up, especially when I got into workout routines in college. It's just chalky, horrible flavors. You know, it was like peanut butter brownie, and it tasted nothing like it. Whereas a Built Bar, 
If you brought one into a movie theater, I wouldn't bat an eye. These things are covered in 100% chocolate. They're so tasty. It's all of the flavor and none of the guilt because they're healthy. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein in most bars. Compare that to a candy bar, you know, the Hershey's, I love Reese's cups. They're usually around 240 calories with 30 grams of sugar and dozens of net carbs. Built Bar, again, healthy, but you've got some incredible flavors. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, you have white chocolate cookies and cream as well. They're so delicious, and I can get you 15% off today when you head over to Built.com. Make sure you use the promo code LOCKED15. It's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and you're going to get 15% off your order of Built Bars. If you're a mint guy, peanut butter, white chocolate, does not matter. Built Bar has it all. They've got marshmallow puff bars, too. The first ever protein-infused marshmallow bars with cinnamon churro flavors, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. Just incredible. Again, Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, for 15% off. And guys, today's show is also sponsored by the official sports book of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's Bet Online. They're your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You've got the draft coming up. You've got the national championship in college basketball. NBA playoffs are right around the corner. The NHL find all of the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship as well. I'm a big golf guy. Cannot wait for this weekend in Augusta. You've got odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season at Bet Online. They continue to be your number one source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Head to the website today, betonline.net, or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action because Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Welcome on back, everybody, to finish up the 2022 mock versus mock. Lou DiBiase, Gino Camilleri, the host of the Lockdown Eagles podcast, going head-to-head once again for another season in a row. It's one of the premier shows we love to do every draft season. So let's get right into it. I'm hoping I won with this one. I think I got off to a good start and hit it with a bang right off the get-go. So I started out by moving picks to get up to pick number 10 to acquire Kavan Thibodeau. The premier edge rusher, my edge number one, how he is falling in these mock drafts, I do not understand, nor do I care. If the Eagles are in a situation where they could go up and get him, it has been reported from Bleeding Green Nation that the Eagles would have Kevon Thibodeau on their board. Seems like a player that Howie Roseman would be very inclined to go up and grab. After that, I moved back. Acquired some 2023 picks. I'll get into all those trades after I get through the selections. I picked Chris Alave at 23. Get that wide receiver opposite Devontae Smith. You get one of the Ohio State guys. You don't get Garrett Wilson, longtime Eagles fan, but you get Chris Olave, one of the best route runners in this class to go opposite Devontae and be a great compliment for Quez Watkins and Zach Paschal. 27, once again, moved back, acquired 2023 20, picks. Got Lewis Seen, safety out of Georgia. Got my safety. First round pick, going to have the fifth year option on him. A guy who can move around all over on the defensive secondary. Guy who comes downhill, hits hard. Guy who could track back, cover the back half of the field. Would be a great, great addition to have in there. Jaquan Brisker also could have been a pick there, but Lewis Seen was the guy that I went with. At number 51, Chad Mooma out of Wyoming. I was up at his pro day last week. Text tested exceptionally well. Looks the part. Interviews very, very well. He's a great human being. Would be a great guy to have in that secondary, in the linebacking unit to compliment Davian Taylor. You have Hassan Reddick there now. You got Kaiser White. Chad Mooma, much like His compatriot, Logan Wilson, in the draft two years ago, really, really similar to that style of player. Logan Wilson was just playing in a Super Bowl. Hopefully, Chad Muma could be a compliment to play on a Super Bowl roster in the near future. Moving on from there, I addressed the interior of the defensive line. They didn't get their guy up top in Jordan Davis, but they get a guy who played in the SEC, who played at Alabama, longtime rival of Georgia, 
Fedarian Mathis. Yeah, Georgia has all the names, but Fedarian Mathis is a hell of a player. And he would be a great three tech to come in here right away, be a rotational style rusher, be somebody who could fill in for Fletcher Cox if he does the part after this year. They need bodies on the inside. They're speculated to be interested in guys like Jordan Davis, Devontae Wyatt, those guys on the inside for Georgia. So why not go and stick in the SEC and grab Fedarian Mathis? Going with teams that played good ball, played in very important situations, not the corner that you wanted up top in a mod sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati, but the guy on the other side of him in Kobe Bryant. He is a player who was tasked with really taking on the brunt of every passing attack that went against Cincinnati because Ahmad Sauce Gardner only allowed 13 yards per game. They were targeting Kobe Bryant just because Ahmad Sauce Gardner was that good. But he has been through the ringer. He's played in big moments, was in the Final Four this year, would be an instant impact guy that could come in and battle for that second cornerback position on the outside. And I would give him the odds-on favorite to win that role right away over Zach McPherson, Tay Gowan, and the rest of the guys. Moving to 154, went with Kentucky, went with an interior offensive lineman. No, not Darian Kennard. He was off the board. But Luke Fortner, somebody who's more of a true center, somebody who's an athlete, somebody that could develop into being your starting center. They need more options that can snap the ball. You do have Isaac. You do have Nate Herbig. You have Landon Dickerson. But would you really want to move all of those guys around? Luke Fortner presents you with another opportunity to have a developmental player on the inside. Then, number 162, I had to make a selection on special teams. The best punter in arguably the past decade, Matt Ariza. He's going to get drafted. I don't know where he's going to get drafted. Hopefully it's not the second round like Tampa Bay Bucks did a few years ago with their kicker that they drafted. But punters are a huge part of this game, and Matt Ariza has the ability to flip the field in the blink of an eye. He did it several times for San Diego State. He was invited to the Combine, only one of two punters invited to the Combine. Just go turn on his highlight tape. The guy is a human highlight reel at the punter position. The Eagles really do have a need there. Aaron Sipos probably will be gone in this offseason, so bring in the best guy in the draft in Matt Ariza. Going back to the offense, finishing up with three straight offensive picks. We go Hassan Haskins, Charlie Collaire, Tyquan Thornton, getting three skill position players, three guys that would be perfect complements to the players already in the building right now. Hassan Haskins, big physical bruising style back, would be a good complement to Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, and Kenny Gainwell. Charlie Collaire, another receiving style threat at tight end. Presents more of an upside than a guy like Jack Stoll. Playing more in the receiving element of Iowa State's game, but also is a very good blocker as well. Would be somebody that could fit into that room with Tyree Jackson, Jack Stoll, and Dallas Goddard. Finally, Tyquan Thornton, one of the Baylor players that they've been linked to. I believe Thornton goes a little bit higher than pick 200. But if he is on the board, he is a burner. He is a track athlete. And he's exactly what this Eagles team has been missing in terms of downfield ability since the young days of Deshaun Jackson, really. They need a burner and somebody that could get downfield. He would be a very, very intriguing piece to that wide receiver room and not a bad pick to close out to the draft. So how did we get here? Well, we did some finagling. We talk about the Eagles wanting to get 2023 picks. Well, to start off, I don't know why this says 2022, but any pick that says 2022, I ended up actually giving up a 2023 or acquiring a 2023 selection. So in this class, I gave up pick number 15, a 2023 second round pick to go up and get Kevon Thibodeau. Very realistic trade, in my opinion. It's a separation of five picks in the teens. It's not up top. The Eagles had to give up a third last year to get from their position at 12 to go to number 10 to get Devontae Smith. I think a two is above and beyond what would needed be needed to get that trade done to go up and get Kevon Thibodeau. The next trade at pick 16, I gave that pickup 
to go to 22, as well as getting a 2023 third round selection. I don't know why this is backwards like this. I don't know what the draft network is doing, but I add another pick in 2023. Then again, I move back with Tampa, pick up a 2023 second round pick, something that I've talked about doing multiple different times on this show. If Tampa does want to come up and get a quarterback, maybe another option for Tom Brady. That is something that they can do. And once again, I keep moving around. I move back, grab a six-round pick in this class from 23 to 22, swap that with Arizona. I still land Chris Olave. They get Jermaine Johnson. Didn't really need to worry about edge rusher as we had gotten Kevon Thibodeau. And then to finish it up, did a little late round swap here. I ended up walking away with Hassan Haskins and Tyquan Thornton, all to move back four picks, get 170 and 200. Hey, I'll take that any day of the week. So now it's up to you folks. It's up to everybody else to decide who is the real winner of this mock versus mock. This is year four that we're doing this. We're going into year five. Hopefully I win it this time, but thank you everybody for joining us here on Mock Draft Monday. You know where to get all the mock drafts up through the draft. We only got three more weeks of these things left until the draft hits on April 28th. That'll do it for us here on the Locked On Eagles podcast. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for making the Locked On Eagles podcast your first listen each and every day. And for your second listen, make sure you check out Locked On NFL Draft, Ryan Tracy and former cornerback, Eric Crocker bring you NFL draft to life each and every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like the Locked On Eagles podcast. We're free and available on YouTube in video form, free and available on audio at Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Apple. You know where to get us by now. Check out Lou. Make him your first read every single day on Fox 43. He's always putting out great written work. Make sure to follow us on Twitter. Follow the mother, mothership at Lockdown Birds. Follow my co-host at DBSELOE and follow myself at GC24 underscore football. That'll do it for us here on Mock Draft Monday. We will be back with more draft talk as we get into the swing of things. We're coming up hot and heavy on this draft. It'll be here before we know it, but that'll do it for me today here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Signing off, as always, thank you for downloading. Thank you for listening. I'm Gino Camilleri. Fly, Eagles, fly.